So I'm, I'm Ken, as it says, and I'm representing here, I guess, the Information Technology and Systems Center from the University of Alabama in Huntsville. And as well as part of what we, we do there, we, are, we also run a, a, a NASA data center there, a DAC, which is a distributed active archive center, uh, the GHRC in this case, Global Hydrology Resource Center. And that's important for part of the discussion here of what, what we're trying to do. Uh, part of what I'm reporting on is, is um, a NASA access funded effort for science on, 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 on Drupal. Uh, it's been going on for the last two years or, or so, I guess. And, and Bruce Karen, who was just setting me up here with all this stuff, is the, is the PI for this effort. Um, and Martin Lansfield, I guess, is in, involved with this. Uh, at, the U, at, at UAH, this is the list of folks that have been involved on our end. Rahul Ramachandran was originally the local co-I on this until he defected from UAH and went to NASA, the dark side, and so we had to kick him off the project. But um, then Sarah Graves took over as the PI on that. Ajinkya Kulkarni that's listed here is really the primary tech developer on, on this. Uh, I, I mentioned that as a way if you have any deep tech questions about any of this stuff, which I don't think you will because of what we're doing, uh, I, I would defer to him because <laughs> I'm, I'm not that person. Um, this is a poster that, that we had at this meeting, in fact, that I, I don't I expect you to be able to read this, but it shows a lot of the other efforts that were involved with this project. Uh, a lot of really cool stuff, of which I'm not going to talk about to, to, to today, but if you're interested, I, I can pr provide you with this, this information to, to show more about what we've been doing. I'm going to focus specifically on just this little part tor towards the end that we're doing as a wrap-up, which in my view is more of a directly simple applied uh, Drupal application where we're trying to use just some off-the-shelf tools and uh, regular technology to solve a particular problem um, that, that we're, we're doing. Uh, just a little bit of some background. Um, what we currently have at the GHRC, our, our DAC uh, at UH and Marshall, is uh, being a DAC, of course, we already have a, a search and order system. Uh, it's in, in the past, this has all been an in-house de developed effort. So it's developed with a variety of different languages and technologies and databases. Uh, but it's, a, it's very much a special in-house de developed application. Uh, as a result of that, um, oh well, just to, to back up, I, I don't want this to come out sounding negative towards the system because it's a very well received system. In fact, this bullet here, I'm, I'm mentioning, it's actually praised throughout the DAC uh, groups as being a very good search and order system for science data. Uh, but some of the characteristics I wanted to point out is that because of the way it's de developed, it's very tightly tied to a specific <laughs> database. So it's very brittle to any changes in the, the database and the system and the services, that, that type, type of thing. So it's very hard, hardwired in, in that, that case. Uh, it is all locally de developed and maintained, um, which is good as long as you have the right people there that know the system from b before and know how to, to work, work with it. But a, as you can see from me, a, a lot of us are starting to age and we may not be, be around in the next five years or so, so it may not be a maintainable system uh, going on. Um, a lot of the tools that we're using are very dated and, and the capabilities uh, are not as flexible as we might want, want to see, especially for new developers that might come, come, come on and not know how to use those tools. Uh, we are responsible for a lot of the, we're responsible locally for a lot of these compliances such as 508 com com compliance uh, and things like web visibility, that, that type of thing. We're, we're having to do all that man in a manual effort at this point. Uh, some of the good sides is that we, we can very, very quickly respond to development 
and changes on this system because it's a locally grown thing and we, we know how, how to do that. But that's kind of the specialized thing and going forward that, that may not be a, a, a huge plus <laughs> of, of this system. So that, that's what we're trying to do is potentially show a way to replace what we're doing with our current search and order system with more of a Drupalized system. And part of the reason for this, I think you'd mentioned going, we're getting ready to change our, our DAX overall web to a, a Drupal system. So there have to, we would have to be some changes in the search and order system anyway to adapt to, to, to that change. So this is kind of a well-timed effort to experiment doing the, the search and order with Drupal so it will fit more easily in, into this new web website that we're, we're doing. Uh, so the approach we, we took, and I, I hope I, I kind of hit on some, some things here that was mentioned before, the, the problems of having customized modules and things in Drupal that you then have to maintain and keep up with. We're, we're trying to avoid that as, as well. And that's what we've tried to do in this system. And I think overall we've been pretty successful, but we'll talk about that as we go through here. Um, so the, the approach we're doing, we're trying, we're, we're employing the Drupal content management system primarily in this case, uh, more for the user management and the web application. So the actual interface is, is Drupal, but we're not making use of a whole lot of the content management system itself in, in as far as the content. Um, other than for the user management, that, that, that type of thing. Um, we're, we've, we added then a database index and search modules that were already existing in, 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 in Drupal to uh, provide the, the search part of the functionality that we need through the science data. And then also we utilized an existing e-commerce module to handle the data ordering and the management of the data ordering system. So um, these are all off, off the shelf things. So the idea was we're not really developing, intentionally not de de developing much of anything for, for this. We're trying to use all off, off the shelf stuff. So it's more a configuration problem rather than a development problem. Um, quick yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and please jump. Jump, jump in whenever. Do you know which modules you're using? By yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll oh, okay, get, cool. get, get, get into that as I go through. Um, a very important part of this was that we had to work very closely with our data management group at the GHRC, our, our, our DAC, because uh, one of the primary goals was to do, do no harm here. We didn't want to come out with functionality that was in any way worse or less than, than what, what we already had. So we had several iterations, many iterations actually with our data management group as we were stepping through, through this to, to prove to, to them that we, we were able to have at least as, as good or if not better functionality because they, they weren't so concerned on how much effort was to de, de, develop it and maintain it. They just wanted to make, make sure from a user perspective that all the capabilities were there and we weren't losing anything along, along that way. So that, that was a real important part of this effort was to keep that in mind. So the, these are really the tools that we're using, getting back to Adam's question, is like I said, for the, the Drupal for the content, the user role management, and the user interfaces. And then we're uh, using Solar, which plugs into Drupal in this case, for the data indexing and the faceted search, which is a huge part of the, the search capability. And then there's an Ubercart uh, uh, e-commerce module that, that we used for the data ordering and, and the management of the, the data orders. So this is all is off the, the shelf stuff that we just pl pl plugged in here. I'm kind of hesitant to say this is all off the shelf and really easy because, you know, Bruce is a PI here and he's been, been giving us money to do, do this. I don't want to imply that, you know, it was real, real easy, <laughs> you know, because he was paying us to do, do this. But, but it was kind of the point of the effort was to uh, try to make it as easy as possible to, to, to do, do this, which is kind of my point of explaining it here. Uh, so just l drill down a little bit into the, the experience with Solar for the indexing and search. Um, so one, one thing we had to do with Solar then was to ingest the existing uh, metadata and 
information from our existing catalog of Earth science data into Drupal uh, or, or into the solar system so solar could index that information. In our particular case, uh, it could have been easier to do this if our current catalog had the capability to, to output a standard metadata uh, structure, such as FGDC or any of the, the ISO st uh, structures. We didn't actually have that, so we could have gone the route of developing that, that capability in our DAC to output that information that, that way, because there's existing uh, ingest modules in Drupal that would have ingested that data directly then. But as a re result, we actually developed some specialized scripts just for our catalog structure to pull that into Drupal. So that, that's one place outside of Drupal, really, that we had to develop a piece that kind of bridged between our existing catalog and what, what we wanted to pull into the Drupal database. But it could have been easier depending on where the source was coming from originally. Um, we did. We ingested both the co co collection or the data set level and the inventory metadata, which is a sizable amount of information in our case for the whole re re repository at, at the DAC. Um, then we were able to just out, out of the box, basically, to, in, to index this catalog information then based on all the different parameters, instruments, platforms, you know, et cetera, things that, that we have uh, information on in, in the catalog that's important to be able to, to, to search on. Um, through solar then, we're, we, we get the benefit of these automatic filters then to be able to filter or on these different facets. So that's just kind of an, an out of the box gift then by, by doing that, uh, which in the past with the existing system you know, was a development effort for each of those type of facets which we had all those facets in the existing system, but it was locally de de developed code that did all that. And here it was just there. So uh, that, that was a huge benefit. <clears throat> um, an additional uh, benefit that, that we got is that there's some metadata entry tools that uh, uh, you know, exist in the, the Drupal and the, the solar environments that will in the future make it easier to add new metadata into the system, uh, which there, there again is not something we have to de de develop. Uh, that, that's just there and will help aid getting more information into the system and really it's a benefit to the users because we can provide some better tools potentially to get that metadata into the system in, in the fu future. One issue we did run into, which gets back to the customization part, is that currently the spatial and temporal filtering of data in, in solar isn't quite up to speed. So, uh, it, it, or at least not for the capabilities that we needed. So besides the facets that we wanted to be able to search on, we needed to be able to do temporal and spatial searches. And that wasn't quite uh, available the way we, we needed it from solar. So we did have to develop some custom pieces for, for that. They're external at, at, at the moment with the hope that if solar comes up to speed in the future, we can get, get rid of those parts and won't have to worry about that. That's a problem going forward potentially, as a lot, a lot of you would know, is that as we upgrade to new, ver new versions of things, we would have to pull those pieces along and keep those as an, an integrated part of the system. So we hope to be able to drop those in the future so we won't have to do that. Um, oh, and the faceted filters on all these uh, different um, aspects, the parameters, instruments, platforms, you know, et cetera, uh, works well on the collection, le the data set level, uh, but is, is not communicated down to the, um, um, the, the level of the inventory, so the actual the granules of data. Part of that is because the way we've implemented that's two different views on the data set and the, the inventory level. And that information is not, at, not automatically filtered down to the inventory level. So we had to do a little bit of uh, manipulation there to get that, those filters passed down to the inventory so we can get the actual granules back from that faceted search. Uh, 
it was kind of a minor point, but I just wanted to point, point out, out here that it was a little, a little bit of an issue that we had to work around. And can I quickly interrupt just a, Yes, sir. So I apologize, I'm a Google Drive idiot. Did, is anyone, anyone having trouble editing notes? Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't edit it. Yeah, yeah I think I um, gave you the, the view link. So the, the new one, I think, is Z-O-8-E-V-6, and I'll correct the slides. So it's lowercase Z-O-8-E-V-6, all lowercase. Um, Sorry for the No, no, it's fine. It's perfect. Fine. So this is just a screenshot then of our, our uh, current solar interface that's doing the, the fasted search. So, so you just see here, you know, the list of the data sets and then on, on the left-hand side, just a few of the, the facets. If we, if we were able to scroll on down here, we'd see more of those. Um, yeah. discussion about it or you know what was I think that that's one of the things that, that can be often a challenge with search is deciding on the facets. Yeah, it, it would depend on your application of course and your, how did you guys, your how did you guys users. Well we came from an existing system, right? Ah, okay. For our, our, our DAC. We've we've been doing this for twenty years. So from user input and, and capabilities that we've done in the past, we essentially had all these facets originally just in our local homegrown uh, application. So we, we added a few here actually because it was just easy uh, to go ahead and add, add those facets you know, as well. But, but we had this, this existing um, application base that we were working from. So that was a known entity. Yeah. But good, good, good point to bring up. Um, so then the, the other aspect of the DAC functionality besides the search is then being able to do orders for the data. So we used a module called Ubercart uh, that's an existing Drupal module uh, to do the online orders. Um, so this handles or helps us do the generation of orders and then uh, more importantly to, to some extent is the management of those orders because we do have a data management group that has to work behind the scenes to manage the, these orders and keep track of things. Um, as far as I'm aware of, and this would be a thing for a Jinkia to address specifically, I don't think we did any module de de development for this at, at all. It's all. It's all been done through configuration of this module and there's still some additional things that, that, that we need to do there, but we had to do things like add new 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 uh, columns and we still need to do some work on changing the com the commerce aspect of this because it's all built around being able to pay for the product that you're ordering and, and in this case the data is free so that's not really an aspect. Uh, it, could be a feature, though, it could be a feature. Uh, I, I keep telling them to put this credit card thing, thing in there and you know we, we, we can use that that would be okay. Uh, <clears throat> So th this is just a quick screen screenshot of you know the uh, the shopping cart checkout type environment. So it's this is is nothing new. It's it's the same type of thing you'd see from any site that you went 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 through that provides uh, ordering of products and being able to pay pay for things, which in this case we're not really doing. Uh, perhaps more important for us is some of the administrative views that we can go in and from the data management group is, can go in uh, behind the scenes then and help manage the orders, create new orders manually if they you know, need, need to do, do that, as well as search, search through the existing uh, uh, orders. So this is a big part that we were having to go back forth and, and iterate with the data management group to be sure we were covering all the capabilities here. Um, but here again, there's still some customization that we're doing through the configuration to get all the right fields that they're, that they're interested in from this system and, and to lessen the um, pay, pay for type uh, experience that we don't really want to expose to the users at, you know, at this point. Uh, so some of the next steps that we're trying to do here in the status is that we're finishing up the order management part. There's still some things we're working with the data management group on to be sure we're covering all their re re requirements on, on that. And then ultimately we're gonna move this to our innovation site 
um, to allow more of a public re review of this functionality and get back some feedback on, on it to help go forward on, on this before we actually um, hopefully we'll integrate it into the GHRC or the DAC operations eventually. Um, because the, the DAC is a production system, this can't be an overnight thing. That'll be a fairly slow process to integrate that into the operational site, but, which is moving to, to Drupal, so that, that, that's good as well. So, <clears throat> so just to uh, go over some of the benefits perceived, and I'm sure there's probably more here than I'm not going to you know, address, but these are just some, some of the ones that are uh, pretty obvious. It dramatically shortens the development time because we were using just off-the-shelf uh, capabilities. Very little de de development went, went, went on here. So uh, it, it was a fairly short cycle. Um, we found that it actually motivates us to uh, re review and do a better job of structuring our metadata in our, our uh, catalog because if it's structured a bit better um, and presented in better ways, it fits into these tools better. So when you know this is the target to use these kind of tools to do that, it makes you kind of go back and police your information a little bit better, refactor some, some, some things, which should be done anyway. But when you're using a, lo a, a locally grown system, it's not always as important because you kind of uh, have some creep in the, the de development there, or the design of your database that's not really optimal you know, at times. So it's, it's been a benefit there. Uh, we got the user and role management just off the shelf from Drupal, so that's a huge benefit because in the past we've had to do, do that you know, our, our, ourselves. Um, we, we feel like, like it's an, insert, an, an improved search capability that, that we're getting as a re, re result of this. Uh, there's still some testing to be done done there, but our initial test has shown that it's it's probably better than what we have now. Um, the or, the off-the-shelf uh, tools for order management are, are really great because that's in the past been a, a big problem for us is is uh, developing and maintaining a good good system to manage those orders. So to get this just just off the shelf has been a real benefit. Um, <clears throat> And I think going on, hopefully, if this proves out to be be useful, uh, this would be real easy to pa to to be able to to package it up and deploy it to other sites if they wanted to use this same system. So basically, we could get it configured, uh, create an image of it perhaps, and deploy it to other DACs or other uh, uh, locations that might want to re reuse this this functionality. So the reusability potential is a big plus here, I think, you know, as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I originally planned to, to jump out and do a, a demonstration of this, but there's no, really not all, all that much to show because um, we, we kind of went through it all here. Um, but this is where I've, I got a link here to our innovations test site. And you're all welcome to go here and play, play, play with this if, you know, if you'd like. But I can't scroll down here, but there, oops. But the first one on, on the, the left here is the science on Drupal effort, and this is the, the data search and order system. So you can go in and play, play, play with this, but you'll basically see just, just what I was showing was that uh, it has the faceted search on, on the left and you're able to create some orders. And uh, that's basically the system. So not, not a huge flashy thing here, but it's just, I think, a practical application of some of this technology to a, a real, real world uh, science data problem you know, that, that, that we have. Um, and that's it. Um, and here, here's the, I think these slides will be available, so the, the link to the innovations test slide is, is here as well. Um, welcome questions or comments? Okay. Well, just your, your okay. Uh, so your data offerings have, uh, the granularity of them are such that you can expose them all to the same 
level of interface, or did people have to drill down, get to the granules that they want to order? Well, and yes, to get to the granules, you do have to drill down through it, but the data sets are all uh, presented at the top level through the different categories and stuff. But, uh, that, that was a discussion actually going back and forth with the data management group, whether we wanted to try to get them all on the first level there, if we wanted to, be, to have to drill down through the categories. At this level, depending on your view, your filter, it's pretty manageable just at the top level with being able to view all the data sets. So, yeah. Yeah. The, um, the metadata you're pulling in, it's fairly mature, the, the system you have to maintain that. That's right. Well, that's still an ongoing discussion. For this prototype, we're actually sucking in all the metadata into Drupal. So we are managing that <clears throat> in that Drupal environment. I think that's the direction from what we've seen that we'll probably will go towards as we move over to a completely Drupal system. We probably actually would use that you know, approach. Um, I can't say for definite that we will, because that's an operational decision that we're going to have to make. That, I'm interested in that, you know, when you move to this new platform, it uh, presents to users the same metadata, but in a more user-friendly way, perhaps, or you can interact with it better. And I wonder what that would highlight in terms of this, you know, the, the content you might want to enhance it with. You know, this is a common search. Yeah, yeah, I, I see where, where you're going. Part of what we gained with, with going to solar, for instance, is a more easily deployed faceted search capability, which that was all kind of a hardwired thing that we were doing locally before. <clears throat> so it is more flexible in that sense, which is what you're getting at, I think. And we could very easily add new facets or new uh, search views into that same catalog now using this capability. <clears throat> because the tools that we're using are specifically developed to be able to do that. Where in the past, if we wanted to add that type of functionality, it was a development effort to go in and add <coughs> those capabilities. <clears throat> so that is a ben benefit here. Uh, from a user experience, you're right, we, it's more easy to add additional views than to slice and dice that information in different ways that the user might want to see that we would have not been able to do as easily before. Yeah. Does that answer your question? <clears throat> yeah, and then more I was interested in the development of new content that maybe, you know, but a scientist would be able to decipher, but now a new user base, they wouldn't have that context, and you need to develop that metadata explicitly for the, that new user base. Hmm. Um, I guess that's possible. We don't foresee that because our catalog is pretty robust now with uh, all the metadata, I think, that from our 20 years of experience doing this data ordering and search system that, uh, and according to the, the standards, there's community standards, of course, on that type of geospatial met, uh, you know, metadata that's uh, collected as well as ESDIS from NASA kind of dictates some of that as well. So I think that's pretty complete in this system. We could expand that. I mean, if we got user requests for more types of information on all of the data sets, but that hasn't typically been our experience that that's the case. But it is easier to expose more of that that perhaps we're not exposing necessarily here. So, yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ken. Yeah.